Welcome to Cultura Latina. Today we're traveling to Argentina to a remarkable and historic doll collection. And also an outstanding monument in Ecuador that overlooks the city of Quito. <laughs> The Fernández Blanco Museum in Buenos Aires holds a permanent doll collection dating back to the 1850s, allowing visitors to take a trip in time through this fine display. Take a look. With dolls dating back to the 1850s, this permanent display of dolls at the Fernández Blanco Museum in Buenos Aires is truly a trip down memory lane. Over 500 items and 200 dolls from across the world make this one of the finest displays of antique dolls in Latin America. Virtually, there is no shortage of important specimens at this display. Collecting dolls is currently very popular. There are many people in the world that collect them. And then there is very much information international the matter. And if you go into any of the international websites on doll collection and compare the types of dolls, the makers, where they originate from, well, you'll find that this collection has them all. The display opened in 2012 when two elderly sisters donated their collection of dolls to the Fernandez Blanco Museum in Buenos Aires. Mabel and Maria Castellano Fortellingham started collecting dolls at a very young age. Unintentionally, their collection became one of the finest in the country, and after knocking back many lucrative offers from abroad, they decided to donate the collection to the museum. Although we are already working on the next installment of rooms to open here at the museum, I think that in the minds of the people, this is the Museum of the Dolls. To many, it isn't the Fernandez Blanco Museum of Spanish-American art. It is a doll museum. So much so that from the moment it opened its four rooms in 2012, we have already received endless donations. When Hitler rose to power in Germany, a non-Jewish German family that opposed that regime fled Germany and came to Argentina with very little and told the little girl that she could only bring one doll with her. She came to Argentina with her doll, and now, as a very elderly woman, she has donated it to the museum. This collection is closely linked to very personal, emotional, psychological and social issues. The doll industry, the consumption of dolls is linked to different social and political phenomena, and also the collective unconscious of the first feelings that a person has as an infant. The Virgin of the Panecillo Monument is a statue that is located in one of the top views of Quito, a must for locals and foreigners. Take a look. Entering by car or plane, travelers know when they are arriving in Quito once they see the emblematic Panecillo, a hill with a large statue overlooking the city. Since the Spanish conquest, what is known to the people of Quito as the Panecillo has undergone various transformations. It was known as Yavira to the Inca, who used the hills as a celestial observatory and sun temple. The Panecillo was used as a staging ground for ceremonies focused on securing the sun's movements and maintaining the calendar. Here in the Panecillo, they stored a famous rope or Maroma, as the Spanish called it. Its name should have been Yavira, which was the name of the rope. It was a rope which was used in ritual ceremonies during the June solstice. It is the second solstice of the year, and it is on this day that they would extend the rope of the Panecillo to the Wanacawi, which is today known as the San Juan Hill. They carried it probably down what is now Benalcazar Street. They carried it there. It was very long. It was a very thick rope, thicker than the thigh of a person. So it seems that those who carried the rope were young people who were being initiated as warriors, to be captains or noble Incas. They were the noble Incas, the youth that had this rite of passage, 
they stopped being children and became warriors. Once the Spanish conquered the region and forcefully subdued indigenous populations, they renamed the hill Fanecillo as it has the shape of one of their traditional breads. From this moment on, the Fanecillo became a strategic site during confrontations with independence forces. It was an incredible site for astronomical observation and also for military purposes to secure the region. This strategic function was made use of in the colonial era for the Spaniards who later built here when they retook the city of Quito in 1812. They built a fort with the aim of being able to see all entrances to the city and anticipate the onslaught of independence forces. With the imposition of Catholicism, a cross was put on top of the Panecillo. It was not until 1955 that construction began on the Virgin of Quito. The Virgin was inspired by the Quito School of Art and was completed in 1975. There was an ideological battle between what are called indigenists, who wanted to validate the indigenous past of the city, and the Hispanists, those who had always bought into the cult of conquest and of the Spanish colonization. But as the Hispanics controlled the municipality of Quito, and in reality the Ecuadorian state, they were the ones who pushed for placing on the hill something that they felt was emblematic to what was supposedly Spanish civilization. In this case, it was the arrival of Catholicism. And for this reason, they chose the image of the Virgin of Quito, which is a symbol of the Quito school, an image that was constructed by Hernando de la Garda, who paradoxically steps on a dragon. The dragon resembles the Incan deity of Amaru, and this seems to symbolize the downfall of pre-Hispanic ideology and religion. The Fanecillo looks towards the famous Basilica Church at the north end of Quito's historic sector. The monument we have here has 7,400 pieces that were made in Valencia, Spain. It was made by Spanish sculptor Augustin de la Eran Matoras. The material is a fusion of three metals, standard platinum aluminium, copper and bronze. The Virgin was taken from the Bible, Apocalypse chapter 12, verse 1 to 14. It's a copy, a replica of the original Virgin, found by Bernardo de la Garda in 1734. That one's in San Francisco Church, and it's 60 centimetres tall. It's the only virgin in the world that has wings, and it's the largest aluminium structure that exists in the Americas. The Panecillo divides Quito between the predominantly wealthy north and less affluent south. Over the years, it has become a symbol of Quito and is the city's most visited attraction. Thanks for watching. Next week, we'll be back with more of Latin American culture. See you then.